Stuart Models Beam Engine Rebuild and this is part 2, a solution to one of the problems and preparing the parts for painting. One of the many problems with this engine is the fact that if you use standard 2BA bolts they will not fit in every one of the bearing blocks. As you can see this one will not rotate when it's in position because the hole is too close to the side of the bearing block. The other side is fine so the solution is simple, buy some of these. 2BA by half inch long bolts with a size smaller head and as you can see in this clip there's no problem anymore. While I was at Blackgate's engineering the other day I also bought some 2BA steel nuts one size smaller. Generally speaking when I go up to Blackgate's to buy nuts and bolts I always buy them longer than I need them which if you think about it is quite a good idea because you can cut them to the length that you require but if they're too short well they're too short. And I also bought 50 7BA by half inch with a size smaller head and 50 standard size 7BA steel nuts. Time to do a bit of cleaning up. This is a bit of a tedious job and I really don't like it but it's necessary. First of all this hideous gasket is going in the bin. Well it's falling from together anyway as you can see. So I'll be making a new gasket for the base of the cylinder. But not just yet because there's a lot of cleaning up to do first. I'm using Scotch Bright for this, I don't really need to get a mirror finish on this part and the edges of it are going to be painted. Jobs like this make a lot of dust and it's not a good idea to breathe in this dust because you don't know what's in the old paint. Normally I wear a breathing mask when I do this job, it's a bit of a pain but it's essential. I've no wish to shorten my life expectancy by breathing in toxic things from the workshop. I found it very laborious using Scotch Bright, so I turned my attention to my small Proxon motor tool fitted with a flapper wheel. These flapper wheels are good because they don't remove too much of the material and they're great for cleaning up parts like this. Although after cleaning it up with the flapper wheel I did go back to the Scotch Bright. That's the base of the cylinder cleaned up, now it's time to look at the column. If you watched the previous episode, which was part one, this column, along with other engine parts, were painted a really horrible mammoth green. But as you can see now, this is not mammoth green, it's a darker colour, and this was underneath the mammoth green. And even though this column, along with some other parts, spent two days in a tub of cellulose thinners, or lacquer thinner, it didn't remove the paint from the main column. It made a bit of a mess of this part on the top. And I'm going to remove this using my Proxon motor tool with the flapper wheel as previously shown. But first of all, I'm going to scrape off all the loose stuff with a craft knife. This is a very blunt craft knife. No apologies for that. I use it for jobs like this, so I don't need it to be sharp. And it makes short work of the loose paint. I remove the rest of the paint using the Proxon motor tool and flapper wheel. This part doesn't need to be really smooth. I mean, I could use a needle file and get it really, really smooth, but then it wouldn't look like a casting. So that's the column prepared for painting. And now it's time to give the same treatment to the part that supports the bearing in which the outer end of the crankshaft runs. This part also spent two days in a tub of cellulose thinners too. And although some of the paint was removed, some of it wasn't. The bare metal that you can see was cleaned up on my belt sander. It's a much quicker method. It scratches the metal, but that's a good thing for keying the paint. What I'm doing here is really smoothing off this paint. I don't want to remove it. If it's sat through two days in a tub of cellulose thinners, I think the paint is pretty well stuck to the metal. Very shortly, I'm going to paint these parts using etch primer. Now it's time to go into the outer part of the workshop. I put a piece of plywood board over my brazing hearth and then another smaller piece of plywood on the large piece of plywood. This will allow me to rotate the components as I paint them. I shut the door to the inner part of the workshop and here I'm opening the door to the outer part of the workshop, the outside world. This will ventilate the area where I'm painting. And while on the subject of painting, my friend Martin painted part of the outside of the shed and the picnic table at the weekend. I'll be using the picnic table to run steam engines on as usual, once the paint's dried. This clip shows the current state of the outside of the house. There's still quite a lot of work to do yet, but we're getting there. And now, back inside the shed, with the inner door closed and the outer door open, it's time to paint these parts. 
The recognisable rattling sound that you've heard at the beginning of this clip was me shaking the can. I shook it for quite a long time according to the directions on the can. I'm going to speed up the painting sequences because it's fairly boring watching spray paint go onto a piece of metal. If you look carefully under the top of the column you'll see a repair. Someone's drilled the holes in the wrong place and plugged them. This is not a big problem, it's underneath the top of the column. That's the painting over with for the moment. I'm now back in the inner part of the workshop on the workbench with the inner door closed to keep all the paint fumes outside. What I'm doing at the moment is unscrewing the stud that I forgot to remove in the previous episode. Just in case you haven't noticed, this beam engine base has been repaired. At some stage it must have sustained damage and it's been brazed back together. I'm really not worried about this. In the clip that you can see at the moment, I'm just scraping off some of the flux from the repair. OK, maybe I'm being a bit pedantic. This is the inside of the base. No one's ever going to see it. Why am I cleaning it up? Well, because I know it's there. And it's never a good idea to leave flux on parts. Before I repaint the base, I'm going to clean up the outside and clean up the inside. I'm trying to hold back my excitement about the next part of the job. I'm going to scrape all the paint off the parts where the column and the cylinder fit. Not forgetting the area where the valve linkage bearings fit. I don't know what type of paint this is. All I can say is it's very well stuck to the base. I'm having to use a chisel to remove it. Normally I could use a ruler, but the ruler just didn't touch it. It just skated over the top. This is a brand new sharp chisel. And I was quite surprised that when I was chipping off the paint on the base like this, it was blunting the chisel. I had to sharpen the chisel on a piece of wet dry sandpaper a couple of times. I finished off the job using a piece of Scotch-Brite. You may be wondering also why I'm doing this, because it's hidden. When you bolt the column in place and the cylinder in place, it's all hidden. But that's not the point. The paint does not give a perfectly flat surface to mount the cylinder and the column. But once I've removed all the paint from these areas, this will give me a perfectly flat surface on which to mount the column and the cylinder. While I was doing this job, I noticed that the paint on the inside edge of the well, which accommodates the big end, was badly scraped. So while I was at it, I removed this at the same time. There are some chips to the paint on the outside edges of the base, but this is not a problem because I'll be using my belt sander to tidy up the brazed repair on the outside of the base anyway. To end this episode, I'd just like to say that this is the first of many more videos to come which will be voiced over in this, my vocal booth in the new studio. It has special acoustic panels on the wall to stop resonance. And this is the other bit outside the vocal booth, the control room. As of yet, not quite finished, but it nearly is. And that's it for this episode. Thanks for watching, and I hope you found it useful. Please take the time to visit my Mainsteam Models website. Click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists. And by doing that, you will find it very easy to find other videos that you may like to watch.